Johnny Costello program, starring Bud Abbott and Lou Costello, brought to you by Camel, the cigarette of costlier, properly aged tobacco. <laughs> the Abbott and Costello program, with the modern rhythm of Will Osborne and his orchestra, Iris Adrian, the swingy singing of Connie Haynes, and spotlighting that tubby, tricky little troublemaker who, when he let the air out of his uncle's tire because he heard the family was looking for a flat, calmly said, I'm a well, Costello, I've been waiting to see you. Where were you this morning? You know, you had a date with me to go duck hunting at daybreak. What did you do, oversleep? Oh, no, I got before daybreak, Abbott, but something terrible happened. Something terrible happened? What was it? At 5.30 this morning, I tiptoed out to the kitchen to cook my breakfast. I put on the maid's apron, and I was bending over the stove when the milkman came in. The milkman grabbed me in his arms and kissed me three times. Abbott, you know what? What? I think we're engaged. I oh. <laughs> Will you please talk, then? You certainly missed a great hunting trip this morning. Oh, I was too tired anyway, Abbott. I went hunting last night in Griffith Park. Uh, you... <laughs> Why, you dummy, there's no hunting in Griffith Park. How long have you been in Hollywood? Now, look, look. That's ridiculous. <laughs> I don't think you know anything about hunting. Oh, no? What time I shot a bear in the foot and knocked all his teeth out? Now, wait a minute. How could you knock a bear's teeth out of the... if you shot him on the foot? He was biting his toenail. Oh, come <laughs> on. Costello, you should be ashamed of yourself. How could you have the nerve to stand up here in front of this intelligent audience and tell such a horrible joke? Well, I happen to like that joke, Abbott. In fact, I like it so well, I think I'm going to tell it again. No, no, not that! Anything but that! Don't tell it again! <laughs> Wait a minute. Come here, buddy. If you don't like our program, what'd you come in here for? I was listening to you on my car radio. I came in here to prove something. What are you trying to prove? At first, I thought the radio was on the bump. <laughs> now I know the bump is on the radio. <laughs> a nice boy. I'd like to buy him a ticket on a sinking ship. <laughs> well, never mind him, Costello. Uh, why aren't you wearing your Spanish costume? Do you realize that tonight you and I are invited to the Latin American Embassy? Oh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. the ambassador asked us to come over to help him uh, cement friendly relations. He meant friendly relations? Yep. Not me, Abbott. That's what got my uncle Artie Stebbins 20 years in Alcatraz. Your uncle Artie Stebbins is in Alcatraz for cementing friendly relations? Yeah. He threw his mother on a concrete mixer. <laughs> <laughs> ah, nonsense, Costello. You're going to the party. I've already run into you a costume. You're going dressed as a Spanish grandee. Dressed as a what? A uh, grandee. Yeah, grandee. Not me. I ain't going to go to no party dressed in a diaper. No, nah, yeah, Tommy. Ah. A grandee doesn't wear a diaper. Oh, no? How about my hat my grandee? No, 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 no. <laughs> no, no. You're thinking of Gandhi. Oh, sure. I like Gandhi. Hershey Gandhi with the nuts. I know. Awesome. You're, going, you're going to be dressed as a Spanish grandee. You have a mustachio and a serape. Oh, no, I won't. I had that last night at the drugstore, and it made me sad. You had a mustachio and a serape in the drugstore? Yeah. Mm-hmm. What are you talking about? Mustachio ice cream covered with chocolate serape. Nah. <laughs> oh, but that's serape. Yeah, I can imagine. Look, what are you talking about? Look, you're going as a Spanish grandee from the Andes. You've heard of the Andes. Oh, sure. I hear them every Tuesday night. The Amos and the Andes. Hey, come on, right ahead of that big Spanish program. What Spanish program? River McGee and Tamale. Now, look. <laughs> you tell me I'm talking about the Andes. The Andes are found in Chile. All I ever found in my Chile was beans. Sometimes a little gristle. Now, look. Stop talking like an imbecile, Costello. Go home and get dressed. You're going to that party. And I say I am not going. Not after the way they insulted me. They insulted you? Yes, they did. Now, get a load of this invitation. Right in the very first line, they insulted me by making fun of my skin. Now, wait a minute. Where does it say anything about your shape? Right there it says it. Senor Lou Costello. Dear Teb Belly Roll. Wait a minute. <laughs> Teb Belly Roll? That's very nice, Abby. Teb Belly Roll? You're calling me a Teb Belly Roll, yes. That's Teb Belly Roll. What's the matter with you? Can't you read? A cavalier is a gentleman who takes a girl out for an expensive dinner, buys her flowers and jewelry, takes her to the finest show in town, and then when he takes her home, he doesn't even ask her for a good night kiss. In South America, they call them cavalieros. South America, they call them cavalieros? Yes. We got the same thing back in Paris, New Jersey. Yes. But we don't call them cavalieros. What do you call them? Ha! Ha! Ah! Hey, 
Repair, oh, Abbott and Costello. Uh, what's this uh, business, Ken? What goes on? Why, that means hail in ancient Greek, the language employed by that famous wise man of some 3,000 years ago whose name was Ethan. He said, and I translate, experience is the best teacher. Yes, what we learn by experience impresses us the most. For instance, during the late great cigarette shortage, camels were scarcest of the scarce, even though camel production was at an all-time high. Smokers had the experience of trying more different brands then than they'd normally try in a lifetime. And did experience teach them that there isn't any substitute for the rich, full flavor and cool mildness of Camel's superb blend of costlier tobaccos? Well, today, more people want Camel's than ever before in the history of this famous brand. Camel's, the cigarette experience smokers are asking for more than ever now. And now here's Will Osborne and the orchestra to take you for a ride on that famous Atchison, Topeka, and Santa Fe. I'm not going to go to that Spanish party. i got a date with my girl, Lena Genter. And if you don't invite her to go with us, then I ain't going either. Uh, or but, but wait a minute. Now, Lena, Lena would be out of place at this party. Our table manners are too disgraceful. Did you ever notice the way she eats? Yes. I think it's cute the way she slides her lower lip onto the plate and banks the meatballs off the spaghetti. <laughs> Castella, forget about Lena and come along with me. It's going to be a wonderful party. I am not going. But you're going to have a wonderful Spanish music. I am not going. But they're going to have rare old Spanish wine. I am not going. But they're going to have 50 luscious brown-eyed Latin American girls. You talked me into it. Uh, <laughs> come on, let's get out of here quick before Lena gets here. If she finds out I'm going any place without her, there's going to be an awful fight. Costello, don't tell me that you fight with Lena. I'll say I do. Last night we fought tooth and nail. Tooth and nail? Yes, yeah, she nailed me in the foot and knocked out my tooth. Oh. <laughs> well, you'd better not let her get you in that Spanish costume. Oh. Uh -oh. Uh oh Open the door. It's me, Lena Ganster. Oh. What am I going to do? Wait, what am I going to do? Wait, wait, wait. Don't get excited. Jump into that bed uh, and pull the covers over you. Come on, hurry up. Okay. I I'll tell you you're sick. Go ahead. Okay. Hi, Abbott. Where is that lumpy-headed large bucket that I'm engaged to? <laughs> here I am, Lena Weeny. I'm lying here on my bed of pain. We'll have to break our date tonight, Lena. I'm a sick man. I got a terrible case of piffle diffle. <laughs> piffle diffle? I never heard of anyone having that. I'm the only one guy in the world that's got it. <laughs> There's something screwy going on here. You don't look sick to me. What are you doing in bed with your hat on? Oh, that's a... My, my, my hat? Hmm? Why did you tell me, Abbott? Why did you tell me I had the hat on? <laughs> oh, my hat! <laughs> oh, oh, my hat! Well, hurry up, big well, 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 you see, Lena, I always wear my hat in bed because if I happen to dream I met you on a street, I want to tip my hat to you. Are you trying to kid me? Come on, get them out, out from under those covers. Ha ha, I thought so. What are you doing in bed with that Mexican suit on? When you've got the piffle dipple, you've got to wear a Mexican suit. <laughs> the pain comes from south of the border. <laughs> Le Lena, please, you, you'd better get out of here before Costello gets another attack. Yes, oh, and I feel one coming on. Yeah, I there it is. Coming on. Take it easy. <laughs> uh, all right. <laughs> 
Dim light in there. Yeah, that's his reading lamp. He's got a bottle full of fireflies. <laughs> Ring the bell, Costello. <laughs> take your finger off the motor. You're using up the electricity. <laughs> oh, oh, it's you, laddie. Uh, I'd invite you in, but I'm afraid you'll frighten the mice I've got in the dining room. Uh, I'd hate to lose those mice. They save me a lot of money. Scotty, how can the mice save you money? Well, you see, laddie, my wife is scared to death of them, and she hasn't been downstairs for her meals in three weeks. <laughs> uh, look, Scotty, we've got to get uh, get out to the Latin American embassy for a big party, and Costello's car is gone. Uh, could you drive us there, please? Oh, I'm very sorry, laddies, oh. but I only drive the car on Saturday night. Why only on Saturday night? Oh, there's no sense in heating up the water in the radiator unless you can use it in the bathtub. <laughs> <laughs> well, come on, Costello. We, we've got to get going or we'll be late. Hey, what time is it by your watch, Scotty? I beg your pardon. How do you like that? He's so tight he wouldn't even give us a time. <laughs> Look, never mind him, Costello. Hey, hey. Here comes a car cruising down the street. We'll, we'll plumb a ride. Come on. Yeah, hey, it looks like a cute babe driving. Hey, she's going to stop, Abbott. Hey, Cook, how about giving me a lift? I'll lift you right off the ground with an uppercut. You'll blow her head. It's Lena! Hey, Abbott, it's Lena! Where do you think you're going? To the hospital. My pistol, pistol just hit me again. Just what? Hit me again. Okay, you asked for it. Get me out of here! And now, Camel's lovely Connie Hanks. Tonight, Connie sings a new ballad built on a couple of words everyone likes to hear. Thank you. 
Actually, Connie, you're swell. Say, tell me, who was your singing teacher, huh? Oh, I've had a number, Ken, and one of the best was named Experience. Ah, wise words, fair lady. Old man Aesop, the fable king, said the same thing in ancient Greece way back some 3,000 years ago. Uh, tuning in on Aesop, we hear uh, experience is the best teacher. And how that was proved when camels were hard to get. You know, during the war, it was the service first with camels. And even though production was breaking all records, the civilian demand just couldn't be met in full. Well, smokers tried more different brands than they'd ordinarily experienced in a lifetime. Seems kind of like they found that nothing takes the place of the rich, full flavor and cool mildness of the costlier tobaccos found in that cigarette called... C-A-M-E-L-S. Camels. For today, more people want camels than ever before in the history of this famous brand. Costello has outwitted Lena Genster again. She dropped him off at the hospital, but he sneaked out of the back way with Bud Abbott. And we find the two of them arriving at the party at the Latin American Embassy. The hostess is greeting the guests at the door. Ah, oh, good evening, gentlemen. Come right here. Thank you, senora. I am Don Pasquale Fernandez. Ah. I am Don Jose Miguelito. Ah. I am Senor Bud Abbott. Ah. <laughs> and I am Senor Lou Costello. Ah. Yeah, but who is this old Spanish onion? <laughs> How dare you make the insult? I am Senora Carmelita Lolita Chiquita Mosquita. And I'll have you know that we Mosquitos are a big family in South America. You're even a bigger family in New Jersey. <laughs> We are wasting time here in the hall. You must meet some of the senoritas. Ah, here comes my niece. Ah, she is making her debut. Tonight she's coming out. She's halfway out already. <laughs> oh, senor, I would like I would like to present my lovely niece to you. Ah, good evening, my handsome Americano. <laughs> I am Senorita Rosita Margarita Mosquita. Now, here's a mosquito I'd like to buzz around with. <laughs> oh, thank you, senor. I like you, too. Oh, I have seen you many times in the moving pictures. Oh, you are make so funny. Can you really know who I am? Who could ever forget little Porky Pig? <laughs> <laughs> Senor, let us go in and dance. The orchestra is about to play a rumba. No, thanks, Rosita. The floor is too crowded. But what has the crowded floor to do with it? Yeah, it's no fun doing a rumba when you can only take your head. <laughs> Let's you and me take a walk on the veranda, Rosita. Hey, that's a good idea, Costello. I'll go with you. On your way, Abbott. Squeeze the crowd. I want to talk to Rosita alone. Well, all right. Talk to her. Abbott, I mean all alone. <laughs> Just the two of us. Get out. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let me get this right. You, you want me to go? Oh, this kid is really tough. Abbott, <laughs> will you get lost? Not you, Rosita. Come in here, Rosita. Ah, oh, isn't it lovely out here, senor? Come, come sit here with me on the bench and sing me a Spanish song. You speak Spanish, don't you? Oh, oui, oui. <laughs> But why waste time singing? I just want to sit here with you. Uh-huh. You like me, see? Yeah. See, see, see. See, see, yeah. See, see. Bonus nuts and hasty bananas. Uh, I, I am beginning to like you too, senor. Maybe we were drawn together by fat. Look at your script. That's fate. <laughs> Look at you. That's fat. <laughs> Please don't talk, Rosita. It's too wonderful sitting here in silence. You are so lovely, so exciting. You smell of roses and magnolias. Thank you, senor. You smell too. <laughs> i got to get me some Spanish writers. Rosita, I have something I would like to ask you, but I, I don't know how to say it. Oh, go ahead, senor. Speak what is in your heart. Okay, Rosita. What are you doing Saturday night? Oh, I'm nothing. Then can I borrow your soap, the smelly kind? <laughs> <laughs> oh, senor, you're so cute. Just for that, I am going to give you a nice big kiss. Aha, senor! How come? 
come I walk in here and find you kissing my girl? Because you wear rubber heels, you sneak. <laughs> Senor, you have kissed my sweetheart and insult my good name. I am Don San Francisco, San Jose, San Luis Obispo, San Diego, San Bernardino. When you come to Glendale, I'll come off. <laughs> Aha, another insult. For that pig, I am going to kill you. Oh, yeah? 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 You know I could use a joke right here? <laughs> Silence. Fine. Fine. When we started this argument, I was just a pig. <laughs> I challenge you to the tool. I will meet you on the field of honor at five o'clock in the morning to avenge this stolen kiss. I didn't steal a kiss. Then what is that red stuff on your lip? That is tomato juice. Tomato juice? Yes, from a little South American tomato. <laughs> that is enough. I will duel you at five. I will give you the choice of swords or pistols. You skunk. If I was a skunk, I wouldn't need swords or pistols. <laughs> Here's the dueling field, Costello. You certainly got yourself into a mess this time. Don San Francisco is a great pistol shot. Have it. I can't go through with this deal. Yeah. Look at me. I'm all nervous and uh, shaky. I can't help it. I walked the floor all last night. I know. And I can't get a wink of sleep because I don't want well, to die. Well, that's silly, Costello. I don't want nobody to tell me. Why well, don't you do like I do? When I can't uh, get to sleep, I just raise my feet in the air and... Let the blood rush to my head. I tried that. It's no good. No sleep? No blood. Oh, <laughs> oh, there you are, gentlemen. We've been waiting for you. I'm the referee of this dueling match. Let me introduce myself. I am Senior Melonhead. I've seen your Melonhead around here before. <laughs> Get a little of shiny dome. Melonhead, you know she used to sit in your front window last night with a lighted candle in your mouth? No. Why do you ask? You look like a Halloween pumpkin. <laughs> I resent that remark, Costello. I was in bed at 8 o'clock last night with my head. Resting on my pillow. You sleep with that bald head on a pillow? Certainly. How do you keep it from sliding off? <laughs> Costello, what's the matter with you? Melon Head is the referee of the duel. He's here to help you. That's right, Costello. I came here to give you first choice of the dueling pistols. I don't need any pistols. I brought my own gun. See? This is the rifle my great grandfather used in the Revolutionary War. It uses flint and powder and shoots iron balls. Ah, you dummy, that old blunderbuss won't work. Yes, it will. Yes, it will. All I do is just strike the flint. On the powder, the powder ignites and the iron ball flows out the end of the barrel. Now watch this. See? (laughs) (laughs) Hasn't got much range, has it? Before the duel starts, Costello, we must have the doctor look you over. Oh, Dr. Settle, so uh, This is Lucas Costello. All right, Mr. Costello, let's get right out of the examination. <laughs> First, I would like to take your temperance. Your temperance. Your temperance. Temperature? No, Bill Fold. <laughs> and now I'd like to have you open your mouth. Open your mouth. Open your mouth. Mouth? No, shirt. <laughs> I would have to unbutton my big fat lips. Well, uh, you look all right for me, kiddo. Now, uh, let's get on with the duel. I gotta get home. You see, there's a chicken cooking on my stove, and I gotta jump into the pot with the chicken. You're gonna jump? You're gonna get in a pot with a chicken? Yeah. <laughs> We're gonna get stood together. <laughs> all right, all right, Costello. Take your place. The duel is about to start. Uh, just a moment now. Uh... How tall are you, Costello? Five foot two. Oh, thank you. Now I can go ahead and dig the hole. <laughs> Where are the rabbit? Did you hear that? Now, will you please step me out of this? It's too late now, Costello. Here comes Don San Francisco second. Hold everything, gentlemen. I have bad news. Don San Francisco is unable to duel this morning. Oh! <laughs> How do you like that, Albert? He's unable to duel this morning. Why, he's nothing but a yellow coward. A sneaking pennyweight. I knew he wouldn't come out here and face me. Why, he's nothing but a... A fair fame. A fair... A fake? A phony. <laughs> <laughs> that is a lie, Costello. Don San Francisco was taken to the hospital this morning with a severe case of people diffle. Piffle diffle. Now I know he's a phony. Because there's one phony to another. There's no such thing as piffle diffle. Oh, so there's no such thing as piffle diffle. I just made that up to pull my girl, Lena. Lena! <laughs> Lena! I'm God, you flubberhead!
have a cigarette in just a moment. And now, this week's salute in the new series of salutes to the men who won the victory. Tonight, we salute the gallant crew of the aircraft carrier Enterprise, which has traveled more than 275,000 war miles and rates 18 out of 22 possible Pacific Theater stars. In your honor, men of the Enterprise, the makers of camels are sending to your fellow servicemen overseas 500,000 camel cigarettes. Shows thus honors the different units of the Army, Navy, Marines, and Coast Guard. A total of a million camels sent free each week. Camel broadcasts go out to the United States twice a week. A rebroadcast to practically every area in the world where our men are stationed, and in cooperation with the Good Neighbor Policy, also to Central and South America. Listen next Thursday when Camel again presents Abbott and Costello. And I'll hear Bud and Lou with the final word. Hey, Costello, somebody's here to see you. Come in, uh, Senorita Mesquita. Ah, Senor Costello, I'm so sorry I caused you so much trouble. You are so sweet, so understanding, such a cute little boy. And you're the cutest little mosquito I've ever seen. Are you going to be around California very long, my little mosquito? Yes, I am. I'm going right home and take down my screens. <laughs> Good night, folks. <laughs> Good night, everybody. And remember, buy 50 bonds at your favorite movie theater. Good night. Good night, everybody. Tune in next week for another great Abbott and Costello show brought to you by Camel Cigarettes. And remember, camels are worth asking for every time. See for yourself how camels, mildness, coolness, and flavor click with you. It's a pipe. Ah, sweet music to any hunter's ear. The piping sound of that great game bird, the curlew. And here's another pipe sound, that sweet music, too. Ah. Yes, sir, that way down deep contented eyes, the sound made by a smoker whose pipe is loaded with Prince Albert smoking tobacco. That rich, full-bodied, mellow, real he-man tobacco flavor, he loves it. And his tongue loves Prince Albert's amazing freedom from bite. You see, Prince Albert gets a special no-bite treatment that leaves in all the flavor but takes out the tongue parts and punishment. You'll go for that. Also, Prince Albert is clip cut for firm packing, easy drawing, and even burning. Make your next pipe full, Prince Albert. Saturday night, be sure to listen to the Prince Albert program, Grand Ole Opry, broadcast coast to coast every Saturday night on NBC. The Abbott and Costello Show for Camel Cigarettes will be back at this very same time next week. Don't miss it. This is Ken Niles in Hollywood wishing you all a pleasure.